<laughs> All right, uh, so uh, today I'm going to be checking out an Eastwood guitar. This is definitely something new to me and uh, maybe hopefully new to you um, because they reached out to me. I had never really even kind of in passing have heard of the brand, familiar with a few things I've seen online. They uh, sent me an email a couple months ago and then said, hey, would you be willing to check out one of the guitars? And uh, I was like, well, of course, why wouldn't I want to check out a guitar? But here's what happened. I went on their website and I was just in my job. My job just hit the ground. I was in shock of how many guitars they make. So many guitars. Um, so basically, it's an entirely different business model than what I've seen other companies do. And I want to explain that real quick. So what they do is you can go to their website and you can put in a request for a type of guitar. It especially seems to be that they're focusing on guitars that are no longer made anymore. This is a Charvel style Surfcaster. And um, that's why I picked this one. This is a guitar they don't really make anymore. So what you do is you go to their website and you say, this is the guitar I would like to see. And you suggest it to them. And then if they uh, kind of like the idea, um, they go ahead and put a Kickstarter out saying, hey, so many sold, you pre-order them and then they make them. Now, a lot of you are probably like, uh, what are the legalities on that? I, I don't know. We're not going to discuss that today. I I'm not even really sure. Um, all I know is this is the guitar. It's in my hands. It says Eastwood on it. I, I don't know. Um, one of the things that I want to point out, the negative, and I'll just get it, get it out of the way because it's kind of nitpicky. This guitar says on the website that it's uh, surf or seafoam green. And I have a guitar that's seafoam green. This is seafoam green for sure. And hopefully on the camera this comes out. This guitar is seafoam green. Now I know sometimes cameras don't capture colors correctly, but I'm promising you this is the correct seafoam green. It might come out blue uh, in the camera, but it's seafoam green. This color is definitely surf green. And again, I'm going off of what I see with my physical eyes, not what the camera's capturing. Just trust me on this. So if you were to order this guitar, I would say if this is the color they're shipping for the seafoam green, you're getting surf green. It is something to take take notice to because um, I kind of always wanted one of these guitars in seafoam green and it's in sea, surf green. Close enough. <laughs> it's close enough, but it's still not exact. So let's talk about what it is. Everything about it is correct. Mahogany body. It is semi hollow and a maple cap with a maple neck and a rosewood fretboard. It's got the shark uh, fin. I guess that's what you call that, right? The shark fin. Um, inlays, uh, which a lot of people said don't look right with this guitar, but that's kind of how Charvel did it in the back of the day. It's got the uh, three on three. It's got the Cluson style. They say Godo style. Again, I'm always confused by that. How can you say something as a style, um, you know, as a company? But uh, to me, it says Godo style. I see Cluson style. Maybe Go Godo makes it. I know Godo makes a version of this, but I thought Cluson was the original of this style of tuning key. For the record, it looks like that. Uh, the tuners are great. You know, when I got it, I was like, oh, they kind of put the, the cheaper clues in tuners. I kind of really was instantly pleased with how well they put. Yeah, so instantly pleased. Uh, Three-way switch feels great. It's in the right position. You got a volume and a tone and of course lipstick pickups. These feel really like the Dane Electro uh, lipstick pickups. They are the longer style too, like Dane Electro. Strat style uh, tremolo bridge with of course the rear rat route. One thing that was nice on this one is in the picture online, the black, the back cover was black, which I didn't think was very cool, but this one came with it matching to the to the pick guard. And again, they might have changed specs. I don't know. It, keep in mind, the company sent this directly to me. This wasn't a purchase I made. So they could have been sending me, um, you know, maybe this is a B stock or, or maybe for promotion. I'm not sure. Another thing to note was they sent it in a really nice gig bag. In fact, it was a really, really nice gig bag. And uh, on the website, I noticed right away, it says that that's an optional purchase. So uh, be aware of that. It has binding. And one thing I want to point out right away, the binding is very, very nice. In fact, that's one thing that you kind of notice on guitars that 
um, are made in China sometimes is that even though the quality of the guitar overall is good, the details are never right. You know what I mean? Um, and when you pick up an inexpensive instrument or a, let's say an import instrument, that is where sometimes it suffers. And if you're not nitpicky, well then you don't care. But however, in higher price points, you're going to probably be nitpicky. So the binding on this is really perfect. I find no flaws, no issues. The neck is a satin finished neck and it feels fantastic. Uh, the carb is good. The carb is definitely very familiar to a Fender Stratocaster. It's not the same exact C shape, but it's close enough to where if you like a standard uh, Fender Stratocaster, whether that be made in Mexico or America, um, uh, you would feel like if you got this neck, it wouldn't feel too thick or too thin. You could feel at home. So that's a good reference point for a guitar like this because sometimes when you order a guitar from a brand you're not familiar with and a product you're not familiar with, you're like, I don't know what kind of neck I'm getting. Um, yeah, if you're at home with that fretboard or that neck, you'll be at home with this neck. And that brings me to the fretboard, which is this is a flatter radius and it feels fantastic. Now, I always put a disclaimer on this now when companies send me guitars. Um, they may have set it up better for, for knowing it's coming for review. I don't know that. I'm going to judge it on its own merits. And I like to point this out to, to everybody. I can honestly tell you that there's probably more companies that never have even looked at the product they sent uh, me for review. In fact, most companies send me B-Stock and Blims for review because they're trying to keep the cost down what they're shipping out. So it is possible they gave me a better specimen, but it is also likely that they just sent something randomly or it's even a like a lower B-Stock and I just haven't det detected the issue with it. I love how they painted the inside black on the F-hole. That is really cool. And it doesn't seem like a big deal, but I mean, they really did. They took the inside and they painted the entire inside black. And I like that because not only did they not just paint the area that you could see, and of course, if you look in there, you don't see any more black, but you do in this case. I like that because I think that aesthetically makes that F-hole, well, I guess it's not an F-hole, right? It's a cat's eye. I think this is a cat's eye hole. Somebody knows the right answer. Put that in the description down below. I thought it was called a cat's eye, but who knows? Anyways, it's a hole. <laughs> it's, hey, it's actually a handle. <laughs> there you go. It's it's a handle. I was wrong the entire time. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so anyways, I like that they painted the inside black as it makes it look aesthetically nice. And I also love that they bound the inside. Again, these little details uh, look really great, especially with the paint because um, the paint lines look really good with the F-hole. The bridge setup, the intonation, everything came great. And it's got the same kind of lipstick tone that I like. Especially in the middle position, you get that. One thing I like about lipstick pickups is they are also kind of warm and smooth. Everybody thinks they're bright sounding. And to me, they've never been bright sounding. They've always been warmer sounding. In the bridge position. See, that sounds bright to me and clear, but not harsh and glass-like. Let's switch on some overdrive. Here we go. They're doing something that's definitely different and interesting, and I thought it was definitely worth looking at and sharing with you guys. I'm really, really uh, curious to see what you guys are thinking of this. Um, I'd love to hear your comments down below, whether you think the idea is great, whether you think the idea is bad. Tell me what, tell me, tell me your thoughts, because like I said, I actually like the idea. I think it's a cool idea. To me, I've always thought this, uh, you know, custom guitars are very expensive, and a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, production guitars being fantastic, and you're right, and custom guitars have now seemed to have built in this, this, this idea that somehow they're somehow so much better than production guitars. And I've never felt that way. They're just unique. To me, a custom guitar is about having something unique more so than just higher quality than production. So to me, if you can make limited production, that's a way of giving somebody something that feels unique, but maybe doesn't have to cost what custom does. 
All right, guys, as always, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And until next video, uh, know your gear.